Last week we talked about mud and we talked about how we were created from mud, but we're also created in the image of God. And that was in the beginning, in Genesis is where we read that. This week I want to look at usable mud, the kind of mud that we can shape and form and give a purpose to, and to see what we can learn about ourselves through looking at clay. For me, my journey with clay started probably whenever I was in elementary school. In elementary school, we take art classes and we take bits of clay and we make coils out of this clay and we, we wrap it around and we create little little animals and we, we pinch it and we form it and, and we create monsters and whatever it is in, in elementary school. And back then I remember just loving the idea of getting to go to art class and creating something and uh, then firing it and then glazing it and then firing it again. It was just a lot of fun. So much so that as I moved into middle school and then into high school, I took every opportunity to take classes that I could get my hands on this, this usable mud as much as possible. So in high school is whenever I really began to be interested in throwing, throwing clay on the wheel. And what that means is you take a lump of clay and you form it and you knead it. You, it's called wedging the clay. You wedge it in order to get all the air pockets out of the clay. Because if there's air pockets in there, whenever you put it in the kiln, the air expands, the gases expand, and they actually explode the pieces of pottery apart. So you need to wedge it real good so that the clay has no air pockets in it. Then you start throwing. The first process that needs to happen is the clay has to be centered. If the clay isn't centered on the top of the wheel, then you're gonna never be able to throw a good pot because the, the clay has to be in the exact center so that it's even the whole way around so that when you begin to throw, this, the walls are even, the, the bottom is even so that you can get a, a good piece of pottery so it can be a nice mug or a nice vase or something like that. Without having the clay centered, you're never going to throw anything that's of any value. So after you center the clay, you begin to put the hole in the top of the clay. And after you put the hole in the top of the clay, you have to make sure that the hole doesn't go down the whole way to the bottom, because then you'll have just a, a tube and you want something with a bottom. So you have to make sure that you leave space at the bottom when you're putting the hole in it. After the hole's in the top of the clay and you have it as deep as you want it to go, you start my favorite part, and that's called pulling up the sides. And you just go down to the bottom and you pinch a little bit of the clay, and because it's elastic, it's able to move as you shape it and you're able to just pull up the sides. And it's the coolest thing to watch a piece of clay begin to grow and to begin to take form and take shape. After you're satisfied with what the shape looks like, you take off the bat, you put on another bat, and you keep throwing again. I get excited whenever I talk about clay because it's a lot of fun for me. It's this hobby that I have had an interest in for years. And as I threw throughout this week, I just thought about how, how neat it is to have a hobby that, that we're interested in, have an interest that I'm able to invest my time in and get excited about and really enjoy doing. So in a couple minutes what I want you to do is, is to talk about those types of things that you have interests in and the way in which they kind of make up who you are. Because whenever we come back after the break, I want to look at who we are, who God created us to be. And sometimes we do that really well and sometimes we don't. So take a couple minutes, talk about who you are, the things that you like to do, and to talk about some of the neat aspects of throwing a piece of clay into a, a vase or a mug or something like that. One of the neat things about clay is that it's been around since the beginning of, of written history. And so it's been looked to to um, make metaphors and to, and to make scriptural lessons even. And there's several places throughout the Bible where clay is mentioned and where it talks about how we are clay. And so what I want you to do is uh, read together out of the Old Testament, Isaiah chapter 64, verse 8. 
It says, Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, you are the potter. We are the work of your hand. The neat part about handmade pottery is that no two pieces are the same. I have here uh, a small mug, and then I have here another small mug. And you see they're about the same size, they look kind of similar, but they're not at all the same. I signed my name on the bottom of both of them, and my signatures aren't even the same. Every piece of pottery that's handmade, no matter how professional somebody is, every piece will be just slightly different, unique, and created by the potter that way. I think there's a lot of value to seeing ourselves as individual pieces of pottery. We're the work of, of God the Father's hands, the master potter, and there's no two of us that are the same. And that's why I think it's really important that we look at what makes us us, who we are, the things that we enjoy to do, the, the activities that we like, and to celebrate that. Because a lot of times we compare ourselves to other people. We look at what the other person has, we look at how they dress, or we look at the, the, the how good they are at sports. We are always comparing ourselves to other people. And sometimes we don't do ourselves justice whenever we look at somebody else and we say, I wish I had that, or I wish I could do that. Because in a way, we're kind of downplaying the reality that God created us. God the Father shaped us and formed us. For me, I would always compare myself to my siblings. And I always felt as though my siblings were so much smarter than I was. They always got better grades. And so I always wished that I could be like them. And I think I didn't really celebrate the reality that I was creative. I was able to do things like pottery or, or many other things that, that I was very good at. And I came to realize that far too often we compare ourselves to other people and we make ourselves feel bad because we look at what we think the other person has. Another passage that you're gonna read in a minute and I find really, really interesting is in Romans chapter nine, uh, verse 21. And it says this, Romans 9, 21. Does not the potter have the right to make out of the same lump of clay some pottery for noble purposes and some pottery for common purposes. And that's in a section of scripture that is talking about the, the reality that, that God is God and God created us and that God is in control and God has power. But that simple passage that says just simply, cannot the potter decide, can't God decide what he's going to make out of the same piece of clay? Some for one purpose and others for another purpose? The reality is, yeah, uh, God did create us differently. And God created us differently for a reason. So we have the choice to either say, God, I, I may not be good at some things, but I'm really good at other things. And to say, God, I wanna glorify you in the things that I am good at. I wanna give you praise in the things that I am good at. Because whenever we look at other people and we say, I wish I was that, I wish I could run as fast as them or, or get as good of grades as they, they do. We kind of oversee the way in which the potter, God, created us. So I think we need to, to keep in mind the things that make us us, the br things that bring us joy, and to try as best as we can to use those things to glorify and honor God. Because then our focus is on God. Our focus is on the potter, the creator, the God that made us unique as individuals, that gives us value, that loves us, that created us for in a purpose, and says, God, help me find out what my purpose is to honor you in my life. Instead of looking at other people and being bummed out that we're not like them. So take the next couple minutes and talk about the way in which we look at other people and the way in which we look at ourselves. And hopefully you have some good conversation.